15 minutes to show take one see what it's all about osiris and that's one hey everybody happy new year it's 2024 it's a Ooh, Lord, let me talk about some stuff that's been going on out here. So anyway, um, everybody's heard about everything. It's 2024. There's been drastic weather shifts in some areas. I know friends that are back east, you know, they are, when I say we're, we're having cold weather here, they laugh out loud, like, look, girlfriend, you must be kidding. It is like freezing, like something like negative 25 below zero in some places and other places have flooded. And then we have beautiful weather here in sunny LA. Although it's sunny, it's, it's a little nippy for, uh, for what we're used to, especially coming out of a hundred degree weather during the summer, uh, summer months. So everything is shifting and it is one of my favorite years. The Chinese year of the dragon. Do I love dragons? They're mythical, they're magical, they're brave, they're strong, they they breathe ah, they breathe fire, they they can fly on water. I mean everything about dragons we love. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that have been going on here. So I'm sure all of you out there, and for those that are interested, because everybody's not really interested in what happens in entertainment, but uh, all of you out there, there has been talk about, um, I'm sure you've heard by now, uh, the interview that uh, Cat Williams did on the Sharp Show. Terry Crews also said that you guys had a, lot of, had a lot of conversation, that this was your opportunity, and you needed to seize this moment. Terry had the benefit of having been in some very high profile situations already and took L's. Mm -hmm. Like he had been in the league. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He 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 had um done pro wrestling. He had done a lot of things. He had been televised and some things that hadn't worked. Right. And this was just fortuitous for him. And now you know what nobody has ever said in the whole industry in twenty years about, you know, the whole Money Mike not getting raped in the bathroom. Right. So I understood going in that there's no reason. I lost every, for a five year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk that all I had said was just, can we take some of this step and fetch it shit out? And then I can do it. Like, it don't need to be overtly homosexual because I'm not homosexual, right? It doesn't need that right. to be funny, right? Mm -hmm. And and me saying that and them going, oh, yeah, no problem. And then going to give it to this other guy and having him do it just like it was and acting like I'm a bad person because I keep standing on my standard. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. But I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, again, I'm... I'm on the winning side of these <laughs> decisions. So um, I wanted to give you a little bit of background about comedy now. I have seen all of these people. They may not know who I am, but I've been around them on different occasions on the media side and covering the news without people necessarily knowing that's what I was doing there. But anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about comedy. So maybe a lot of you may not know this, but there was an agency called Spotlight Enterprises. Spotlight was the first ever comic agency to represent comedians. There was a time in entertainment that comedians were considered to be low on the totem pole. Nobody would touch a comedian. They got shit jobs. The clubs that they were playing were those low where you put dust and sand on the floor kind of honky tonk clubs. Those kind of things was the scene for comics back in the day. And along comes Mr. Robert Williams, called Bob Williams, president of Spotlight, and his cohort in uh, a musical, I mean, in, uh, comedic genius in terms of uh, representing comics was Jeffrey L. Patterson. And I was lying on the floor one day with the flu. And I was looking through then the Hollywood Reporter and there was an opening, the little bitty ad 
That said, looking for a receptionist, Spotlight Enterprises, I had no idea who they were when I started. So when, we went, when I went over there, the guy, he heard my voice, it was Scott. I can't think of Scott's last name, it was Scott, uh, uh, J.P. Williams, Debbie Shaler, Sharon was there, uh, Jeff was there, and then when I went in, when I, they called me on the phone, they called me back and said, We'll call you back in a few days, but they actually called me back in a few hours later and said, we know you feel bad, but we like your energy. Can you come in uh, tomorrow? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I don't feel as good, but I'm going to come in anyway. So I went over there. They hired me on the spot. Within two weeks of being there, I was the purse of the assistant uh, to Jeffrey, who is the executive president of the company, and Bob. And for a minute, I was working with both of them because they hadn't found, found one for, totally for Bob yet. But it was really interesting, all the things I got to learn. So let me share a little bit of information with you about what, how it used to be back in that time. I was like a kid, you know, fresh out of the woods, new to the industry, wanted to learn everything, soak up everything, know everybody, go everywhere, things like that. So in the back, there was a room, file room. On shelves, there was a picture of the comic, a resume, shirt resume, where they worked, <clears throat> their height, the way, blah, 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 where they worked on that. And Bob and Jeff would add in a VH1 videotape. Ten minutes of the comic stand-up. Because back then there was mostly stand-up for them. So they, we started sending those out. We would send boxes and boxes of them out to comedy clubs all over the country. That's how we were able to start building names like Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld knows you're still alive, so if you hear this interview, Jerry, you know where you started. Damon Wayne, Shecky Green, Amazing Jonathan, Norm MacDonald, Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, they were all our clients. Marcus King walked in from the Bay, where uh, I think that's where he and Jamie came from. I met Jamie when he first got here. Uh, he, they walked in the office and they, uh, I think Bob and Jeff started working with them. Um, geez, uh, just tons of people. So when I left Spotlight, I ended up at the music agency, William Morris at the time. Well, within that uh, company, there was Bill Branca. Now, William Branca is the king of comic representation. If any of you out there, again, he no longer works in that industry, but at the time, he had done 25 years at William Morris, building the comedy of Chris Rock, Martin Lawrence, uh, all of those uh, very famous people. Uh, they, he groomed them. I mean, I don't know if Carlos Mencia was around or he was being repped by William Morris, but he was around just everybody when they used to do comedy down at the Improv on Melrose. They used to comedy, um, uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie and, uh, the comedy club, the comedy store. People would just show up at like 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning and do a live set. They may still do that. I don't know because I'm no longer on that side of the industry. But during that time, we worked a lot with comics. But just so you guys know, comics weren't always the shishi foo foo there are now, which leads me to the conversation that Cat Williams had on the interview. So. He, you know, it's unfortunate, and I try to take things in a global kind of multiversal way. It is unfortunate that we can't find something caring and understanding and compassionate to talk about when we talk about each other. And I know there are egos involved. I'm not a man, so my ego is structured very differently than theirs. But I do know that egos are egos no matter who they are embodied by. So it's unfortunate that we have to put another person down for any reason, but at the same time, for those of us who from time to time get flack for whatever reason, you know, it makes one be all the more conscious and aware about how we carry ourselves, how we protect ourselves, our state of mental health, you know, um, what we let into the lens of who we are, uh, and what we let out, uh, who we choose to be around, 
and different things like that. So if you could look, let's just say, I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. So let's just say when Kat was talking about what uh, he talked about, Kevin Hart, Steve Harvey, all of them, they all know each other. Now I, when uh, James Brown at the time, if you know who James Brown, the Godfather of Soul was, at that time, Vibe Magazine had a show. Sinbad was the host of the show. Mr. James Brown showed up in town and he was doing the show. It was the show, it was called The Vibe Show. Uh, Sinbad was the host. It was started by Vibe Magazine because uh, Quincy Jones was, I think he was, that was his magazine at the time. So Steve Harvey was sitting backstage. Uh, and he, I was sitting next on the couch next to him. He never ever said a word to me as if I was invisible. I personally have never been like a, a what I want to say, a celebrity bug. I don't bug them. I've been in entertainment since I was really young. It's no big deal to me when I see a celebrity. I'm just happy to see them and know they're doing their creative work. They are still making money. It is hard out there. And I'm on, I, we, were, I, we were on the rep representation side. So, you know, we had to do the assistants and all the people behind the scenes are the people that actually run the industry, not the people in front of the camera that you out there make into celebrities. The people behind the scenes run the industry. The assistants, the personal assistants, the executive assistants, the agents, the managers, they are the ones that make it possible for those people to be out there in front of the camera and give you the stuff that you need to feel good to get high on, you know, and all of the other things that entertainment does for one's personal energy. So when Cat was speaking, let's just imagine, just take his body away. Go with me an imaginative thing. If a person's talking, imagine that he's talking and there's no body there. There's just rays of energy coming off the person. So every time someone speaks a down vibration, like a note on a musical scale, the color drops, the vibration drops. Then if they speak on a high note, the note goes high again. If they speak on a medium note, maybe they're kind of undecisive about how they feel or their emotional uh, status is on, the, on that. Uh, on a high or a low note, all of those things are what we call in the energy field of healing and work, vibration and frequency. So when someone has mixed thoughts, the frequency is all over the place. Like if you were seeing a burst of explosion of firecrackers and stuff, how the sparkles are going one way and then the, 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 the red's going here and the blue going there and everything. Well, there are those people who can see those things and it doesn't mean they have any special gifts. They're just sensitive to energy. Much like if somebody passes by you and go, oh, that person felt weird or that person feels weird or the, the energy or whatever is coming off of that person. So that's what happens when we talk about each other, whether it's emotional, business-wise, whatever. If there's a discordant harmony or frequency or energy, it looks and it feels discordant. And then we have to deal with the flat that comes back from sending out or receiving discordant energy and discordant frequencies and vibrations. So from my heart to yours, I hate when we talk about each other. I'd rather be laughing about some shit that happened backstage and it was funny, <laughs> you know, or something like that. I remember talking to some of the famous rock stars at the time. You know, people from some of the famous rock bands, you know, uh, the Turtles, the Animals, you know, Velvet Underground, some of those bands. And they would talk about some of the funny things. I remember I met the guy <coughs> who was the, uh, the Three Dog Night. And he was the black drummer for Three Dog Night. And they were talking about how they were so drunk one night. They had to do the Rose Parade. It was some show they had to do. And they had to literally tie one of the band members to the post on the float 
to keep him from falling off of the float because they had to do the show and they were committed to the show and got paid. So I'd rather hear stories like that than, you know, the put down. Now, I'm not saying if it's true, I don't know. I don't know any of these people personal. And I haven't been around them other than in situations, always in a business situation, never in something where I'm hanging with them or anything like that. I know a few people that I've hung around, and that's between me and them. You know, but in terms of just being in the industry, I've always been at an, at an industry and a working capacity around people. So I've had a lot of opportunity to observe. And it's just really hard on people like myself that are sensitive beings to watch their frequencies go up and down when we're talking and we're using discordant tones, you know, using negative things about people or ourselves and things like that. So I just want to remind you that in 2024, I want to say let's up it, let's up it, let's up it. Let's up the vibe. Let's up the frequency. Let's raise it up. Uh, we've already leveled it up. Some people have leveled it up and gone high enough or whatever. But I'm talking about raise it. You know, raise the vibrational frequency so that you don't have the need or you don't even want to talk bad about somebody, not even yourself. You know, you want to try to keep it on. It doesn't mean that people aren't crazy and that everybody doesn't have negative or positive qualities. We all have them. But if we can focus on more of the positive and more of the high frequency, and you know, it's like being in a dream. It feels so good when you're in harmony with the law of life, you know, and you can go out and you can draw these positive things and positive people, it feels like a, mm, it feels like a sexy, warm, sensual summer afternoon, for lack of a better way to explain it. So have a good time in 2024. That's our show, my commentary for today. Uh, looking forward to seeing you all on the next show. And don't forget to touch and subscribe to the channel, 15 Minutes of Show. My name is Osiris. It's been a pleasure being your host today. And I will talk to you soon. Check me out on IG, Osiris underscore Munir underscore The Painter. And just Google my name. I'm all over the place. So see you there. Be square. Bye. See you next time. Bye.